Hello. As I was thinking about making this video, well, the reason why I'm making this video is because several people who I've become acquainted with from making YouTube videos have texted me and said, hey, how are you? Are you okay? What are you up to? And rather than, I mean, I'm so sorry, I should take the time to respond individually. But right now, life is super busy. So I thought I'd just make a little, hey, it's summer 2021 and Allie's book club. <laughs> I used to watch Oprah when I was a teenager and I always loved like her book recommendations. Oh, I forgot one of the books I wanted to bring. I have a pile. I'm uh, a little ADHD when it comes to reading, especially I'll start a book. I'll get 20, 30, 40 pages into it. And then I'll look at a different book on my shelf and I'll be like, Ooh, I want to read that too. So I have about 10 books going at the moment and yeah, so life is really good. I just got back from the beach with my mom. She says hello to everybody and I'll, I'll have her on here soon. What I was thinking about as I was pulling out my phone to shoot this is the phenomena of YouTube and how we just hit record and talk to a little dot on a screen and a conversation is initiated and from that relationships are born and it becomes real. When I started YouTubing, I was just talking into the ethos and didn't know if anyone would watch, if anyone would care. And I was processing a lot of stuff. And because I feel like I've processed a lot of it, I don't need to make videos anymore. And I am thankful for everybody else who does make videos. When I started doing this a couple years ago, well, I, 2018, yeah, I just celebrated my two years officially out of the Borg. That's, that's good. But when I started making videos back then, yeah, now there's lots of us and it's awesome. And life is great. And life really does begin when you are able to be free of organizations that brain damage you. So, uh, Let's talk about some of the books I'm reading. I'm about halfway through this one and I love it. It, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to do like a big explanation of each book. I'll just put it up there. And I have a lot of books on my Kindle too, and I'm not going to go through those either. The, the one that I'm reading right now, my Kindle is called Habits of the Heart. And it basically talks about how, how do we live, especially in Western countries, I'm in the United States. It's a very individualistic driven, ooh, a yellow finch, <laughs> a very individualistic driven country. And how do we live our lives taking personal responsibility for our choices while not, while also taking care of those who are less fortunate around us? That's the basic gist I'm getting from it, but it's a pretty meaty book and I'm enjoying it. All right, Neil T. Anderson victory over darkness. And I think these are going to show up like opposite because the way my phone records stuff, I'm sorry, but victory over the darkness. Very good book. It's Jesus promise to you, the promise that you live triumphantly, but what keeps you from really walking in the joy of the Lord? The powers of darkness attack us daily. However, as Dr. Anderson shows in victory over the darkness, you can have the power to conquer them by knowing who you are in Christ. Amen. Another book that I started because I really liked her other book called Another Gospel? Question mark. Alyssa Childers, Mama Bear Apologetics. I just want to understand more the general body of Christ. That's why I got that book. I got this book several years ago and I love this book. I read this book twice. Lots of underlining. Yes. Uh, accidental Pharisees. Is it possible to be too zealous for God? It is. That's what we came from. We were accidental Pharisees when we were Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, let's see. I haven't started this and this is going to be a long haul, but a friend recommended it and I need it because my vocabulary is probably stunted at like fourth, fifth grade. Oh, vocabulary advantage. Yeah. 
I haven't started it yet, but it is on my end table. And uh, on that note, how to read a book. I was going to start school and then COVID happened and now I don't really even know what I want to do. So that's why I got these books because I, you know, you can, we can educate ourselves. In another area, oh, I left that book over there, but I've been reading, uh, it's an excellent book. It's called The Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller. Relationships are hard, they're work, and it was a very good book. And he has a companion daily devotional, and I enjoy that. I, I love starting my day with that very much. I highly recommend it. Timothy Keller, and he has tons of sermons on YouTube. Uh, very scholastic. He, he was, he is, was, um, he actually has pancreatic cancer right now, so I'm praying for him and his wife um, in New York City. Awesome ministry, Timothy Keller. Speaking of daily devotionals, I'm also reading slash doing this book, The Love Dare. If you're married, I highly recommend it. It's not easy. I have not started this book yet. Again, this was a recommendation. It is called The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard. Uh, I'll just read this back. Gracefully weaving biblical teaching, popular culture, science, and scholarship together, Dallas Willard refuted the view that Christianity is solely about gaining admittance to heaven when we die and taught that as disciples, we have access now to the life of the kingdom. Awesome. Another book I just barely got into is called Church of Cowards, a wake-up call to complacent Christians. And this was recommended by my friend Andrea, and I still haven't read it, but it's only 56 pages long, so I can read it tonight. It's called The Key to Everything. The Key to Everything illustrates and explains the position of the believer as a container for God's presence in the world today. It then explains how to become a container and how to grow in the Christian life. Here indeed is the key to everything in 56 pages. Well, that's a very high bar. In other kind of books to round out my reading, um, a friend recommended this book. It is a novel and I have not given myself the indulgence of enjoying a novel for a very long time. The last novel, well, no, that was a memoir, was Leaving the Witness by Amber Scora, which was such a good book. You are, she is such a good writer, and the audio is just as good. This book is called Homecoming, and it follows the parallel paths of sisters from Africa. One is sold into slavery, and the other is Mary's... Um, a rich guy and has like a very privileged life. Sounds really interesting. So I'm going to enjoy that. Uh, another book, I think it's good, especially for people who come from where we've come from, Healing the Shame That Binds You. Haven't started that. Uh, of course, because I work in restaurants and I loved this person. I saw him speak live with Eric Repair, Anthony Bourdain. I loved all of his travel vlog episodes and just who he was as a person and his latest documentary movie, which is a little controversial because they took his voice and like dubbed it into a narrative post-mortem technology. There's a lot of ethics involved in that. It's like he didn't actually say that. You just put his voice to words that you think he would have said. Anyway, Anthony Bourdain, World Travel. And this is just a nice light book because it, it's like a couple pages per destination. And it's, oh, look, I just turned to Croatia. And then finally, I, I am enjoying this book. Breathe, a life in flow. Jiu-jitsu, yeah. Really good principles. I'm only beginning to appreciate things that I would have never even given a second look at when I was a Jehovah's Witness. So I'm enjoying that. 
wow, we're at 10 minutes. Yikes. Um, I've been working a lot, a lot, a lot. I got a new job. That was an interesting situation. I hadn't gone on a job interview or updated my resume in 15 years. And I am noticing about myself and maybe other people can write in the comments, like as you get older, you get very comfortable with your comfort zone. And even if you're miserable in your comfort zone, you stay there. And so to venture outside of that and push yourself is always a good exercise. So that was a nice learning experience. And, uh, hmm, what else? I'm going to, I'm going to finish this video with the paddle boarding that I did today. It was one of my goals to paddle out to these buoys by the power plant where I live. I don't even know how far, far out it was, but it was like a two, two and a half hour paddle. So it was a, it was a good workout and I was proud of myself for doing it. It was just me and the seagulls. The water was so beautiful. So enjoy the little video clips I took along the way. My dad turned 84, had a nice meal with him and bought him a cake and the face, the look on his face was priceless because he had never had a birthday cake before in his life. So it's never too late. Just having fun with, with friends, really focusing my life now more on the local level. Um, I went to a funeral of a teacher. He was an awesome teacher, an awesome, awesome man, Lewis Milstead. He taught shop and he was so much more than a teacher. He was a Cub Scout leader for 27 years. He taught um, high school and middle school industrial arts for 25 years. Uh, a faithful husband, a father of two boys who grew up into awesome men and just being there and seeing how he touched the community. And I did think to myself, like when I die, I wonder if anybody will come to my funeral because most of the people I know don't live here and that's okay. Um, yeah, I think about stuff like that, my funeral. What hobbies and activities and fun stuff post Watchtower have you got into? Things that perhaps maybe surprise you about yourself that you're enjoying? Post that in the comments below because I think it's important for people, maybe people newly exiting high control groups like Watchtower to see that life on, on the other side, on the next side, whatever is awesome. So enjoy the little paddle and have a really great day and yeah, ciao for now, shalom. All right, new paddle goal today. Offshore of the light uh, of the power plant, there's some buoys. I've never been there. The lake is super still today. Let's do it. Getting closer. There it is. That's what I'm heading towards. Whew. And I came from those white buildings. Good, that is so cool. Did you go to the buoy? Did you go to the buoy? Not yet. All right. Oh my God, goals. Wow, that is so cool. I love this lake. All right, there it is. The two middle fingers of Sheboygan. It's really quite ugly what man does for energy. Almost there. Yay, the water is perfect today. I have, a <clears throat> I have arrived. It's kind of spooky. And these are huge absolutely huge and I scared all the birds away and these weird big swells come it's like five big swells it's really fun to ride and then it gets calm again all right 
I'm here. I made it to the buoys. It took me about 45 minutes from Blue Harbor. The conditions are beyond perfect. Yay! Cross that off my list. Have a great day! Gotta go back to work. It's just me and the seagulls. Heading back to shore. Oh, sorry buddy. I know, silence is golden. I'm not very gold. So right at the bottom of that green hill, right there by those rocks and those parked cars, that's where I got baptized November 30th, 2017. It was 34 degrees outside, the lake wasn't much warmer. We didn't linger, but it was beautiful. <laughs> 